So all this thing around you, the cosmos, yeah. is this part of God? You think you're a free thinker because you're not religious. Do you believe <laughs> there is no creator, no God? And intuition and all. So when we are in the calm mind, we connect with that intuition, which is which is within us. All the godness uh, is not there somewhere. It's there within us. But our mind sometimes it doesn't uh, let us to go. So doing meditation, it will the med the mind will stop its activity. Mm -hmm. So that way we connect with our inner self. Yeah. So that's which the start of a process. Yeah. Are you saying this is God? Yeah, connecting with our inner self is God. So your inner self is God? Yeah. So all this thing around you, the cosmos, yeah. is this part of God? That, that is the whole God we can say. And Don't the you understand by the time God? Because that is, that's what you're assuming to be. Yeah. What is your understanding of God? And the part of God is there within no, us. No, what, is, what, is, what is God to okay. you? We can say like uh, God is simply we can say like power, power of energy. The creator, energy. God is. Also so a God is a power and energy. Is this energy conscious? Yes. Okay. So did this energy consciously transform you into what you are? Of course. Okay. So when this energy God transforms you into what you are, for what reason? transformed you for what for exactly uh, the question what you said uh, need to be understood like what the life purpose is about is, it, is that what you're asking no, any transformation that happened yeah. we need to ask for an explanation why has it changed why has it changed from I mean clearly you weren't here as a human being like you about 20 years ago right mm, yeah. right so there's a transformation happened to you yeah. whatever you were whether you were in existence or not yeah. So why are you here? What, what's the purpose of your being here and transformed like this? Excuse me, brother. So for that reason, we are doing meditation and knowing myself. So before when I was doing masters, like I was trying for jobs and I didn't get. But doing meditation, like it manifested it. What, 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 what is what it? What job I wanted? Sure, sure. So the purpose of your existence yeah. through meditation you have come to know is? What is the purpose of your existence by going through this? process of meditating it cannot be simply said in one word right uh, what's your purpose of existence it comes with the is it to eat bananas <laughs> <laughs> can be it's also part of your life I mean do it you really be, think it could it could be major it, it could be more than it it could be complete more massive what is it then so yeah uh, achieving whatever I wanted whatever I feel I want so you make your own purpose yeah no, sorry, go ahead. Do you make your own purpose of existence? Yeah. Doesn't make sense, does it? If there is a creator God, as you said, the creator God made you into existence in this form that you are, did you decide to be in this form? Yeah. I, I, so you decided to be a human being? When? So, I kind of got one sorry. Hmm? I kind of got confused. So, you are a human being compared to a tree, for example. Mm. So, did you decide, did you, in any, any point in time, decide to come in the form of a human being rather than a tree or an elephant? Was it under your control? Because you were saying, you make your purpose. You decide what your purpose of existence is. Yeah. Did you decide to be what you are? Uh... No. Right. So the decision comes from the Creator. Yeah. So what does the Creator say in terms of your purpose of existence is? That's more reasonable to ask. Mm. What is it? What's your... I mean, as Muslims, mm. what's the purpose of existence? Bro, so we believe that God created us to, uh, to worship Him. And in Islam, the concept of worship is so broad in the sense that we're not talking about just meditating in a room alone. We're talking about living a godly life. All aspects of your life that are um, what's called righteous can be considered worship. And this life we're put here, Allah says in the Quran, um, as a test to test who, which of you is best in piety. And it, this test will, you will, uh, based on how you do on this test, is your afterlife and how you do in your afterlife. How does that sound to you? 
Mm. Good. So, did you reach anything more through the meditation stuff, or did we just uh, give you a lot more than you've reached in uh, the meditation stuff? Oh, we can't compare in that sense. Like uh, with meditation, also I experienced what myself. I can able to get rid of my old habits. Mm -hmm. I got uh, I got rid of my smoking, which I mm -hmm. which I did earlier. But after coming meditation, I uh, I got rid of. So yeah, of course, of course. To, to to make a comparison, just Ramadan, the month of Ramadan has passed. Yeah. You know how many people got rid of the smoking and all these bad habits? Yeah. It just did it because it was a practical steps yeah. in which people can actually make themselves better and connect to God and be more righteous. Leave their evil and ways. Yeah. yeah so let, let's come to a point like we no need to compare which, no, is, no, good, which I, is better. I'm not saying that. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Through a process, yeah. you can change. True. No, no dispute. I just give you an example of a process in so, Islam in which we have a process. Yeah. Like the prayer that we have, it prevents us from doing any evil actions. Like for example, now is about what? What time is it? Oh no, my time is still. Say on about time. three o'clock ish. Right? Yeah. right. Right Almost now it's around three. just three. We live our life, the next moment someone is having any thoughts of doing some bad actions, immediately comes to them, I have my next prayer, Asr prayer coming. It will prevent them, even just the thought of there's another prayer coming, prevent them from walking into a pub or a brothel or a casino and so on and so forth. Because they know they have to stand in front of God to account for their lives. Yeah? yeah. So there are practical ways in our Islamic principles of living in which we can achieve what you're trying to achieve through meditation. So let's go back to the question about what is the purpose of existence, say, say, um, the Sanatan Dharmist have come to know, or the Buddhist tradition, or the Tantric tradition have come to know. I don't know which tradition you are representing. Which tradition are you representing? So we are not coming from any cultural background, but we just want to give awareness of meditation. We are Who is your guru or a teacher in that meditation so pathway? All the, all the New Age masters are there. New Louis Age master. Yeah. Louis LK, Patriji. <coughs> so, so what did they Buddha, achieve themselves so in terms the of? The meditation came from Buddha. Uh, to the earth. Look, I'm not asking any of that. I understand this is a process. Yeah. Your masters have gone through, your gurus have gone through the process. Yeah. What have they achieved in terms of the purpose of existence is through their own meditation. Remember, the master should know better than the Student. disciples and students, right? Yeah. So what have they come to the conclusion? The purpose of our existence is? Purpose of our existence is like living, living properly. No, you live, yeah. but what's the purpose of living? So over the, it's not that one. We are there in one life. We are there from past lives as well. How do you know there's another life? Mm. How do we know? So uh, there's a patterns of things we are, what in life what that we go through, but we can't read off. So that we really. Do you remember anything of your past life? No. Right. So when you assume you had a past life, it comes from some belief system. What is the basis of your belief to believe okay, in a that's okay. past I got, life? I got some work out there. I, need, I also need to organize. Sorry to leave. Anyway, Do you have any you. friends who can Thank pass you. it on to your friends so we can continue that conversation? No, no, no. no. Why not? <laughs> we want to learn about your meditation processes. <laughs> he has no fundamentals. He's answering you from you his can own. You can come to us and explain to us how you know this process really gives you the answers um, anyway it seems maybe there aren't any answers um, maybe they're not so yeah. that's why we're saying you know look into Islam you know it will really help you achieve what you're trying to achieve who says Islam is a religion Islam is a way of life which you also have a way of life and compare Islam and you will see Islam is the best way of life do you disagree why what is really? a religion? It's a religion? Oh, so does a religion have a political and economic structure as well? Or are you superimposing Christianity's uh, shortcomings and making it seem like Islam is the same structure? I am for free thinking. Really? You think you're a free thinker because you're not religious? Exactly. Are you an atheist? I'm not. Okay, so do you think that just because you don't follow a religious dogma, you don't follow the dogma of your country, you don't follow the I'm dogmas? I'm open to a lot of dogma. And I mm. think, 
and clever enough to study many different dogmas. Okay. And to then have my own so if you're so clever without having to, to listen to what so I'm so oh wait so how would you learn about other dogmas if you don't listen about what other people say? I read books. Oh, you read books. Okay, so then how did you make such a basic error when describing Islam? So, I mean, maybe you're not that clever. I read a lot about Islam. Oh, you read a, a lot about Islam, but then you would make the basic error of saying that it's a religion, when even is, Islam doesn't portray itself as a religion. Religion, Christianity is also a religion. Really? Okay. Hinduism also. So what does, what does, Hinduism also. What does what's the, uh, okay, what's the uh, punish, what are the punishments in the New Testament for, um, I don't know, uh, rape or uh, stealing or any of these things? I didn't, I, I don't care about this. But you must, you must still, have read it, right? I, study, Do you, I study the core. I'm not studying, I'm not Okay. Learning everything which is written in the Bible. Or the Sir, Bible. the point is, is that you're making a false comparison. Islam is not a religion because, by your definition, Islam is not only a belief. Islam is a political structure. Islam is, whether you agree with it or not, it's irrelevant. I'm not saying you have to. I'm saying Islam is a, a way of to do politics. Islam is a way to do finance. Islam is a way to uh, have gender relations. Islam is a marriage structure, etc., etc. So, it's so no, so it's not. It's Hinduism. No, no, what's the political structure of Christianity? Enlighten me. This is the I'm sorry, uh, you mean the secular democracy we're living in? That's Christian. Where does it say in the... Uh, sir, where does it say in the New Testament uh, to govern by secular democracy in the New Testament? Where? I'd love to know. I don't know about the New Testament. I'm not learning... Where in all of the Bible? Where in all of the Bible and the church tradition does it say to govern by secular democracy? No, I don't read the Bible every day. I don't know the Bible by heart. I don't. You don't care. need to know. You can use your phone. The Bible. You don't need to know. Use your phone. Where, where does it say secular? Though. You're assuming this country is based on Christian teachings, which has all of those teachings. Yeah, but the teaching has to be based on some foundational thing like a book the, the scripture like the Bible if you don't find anything in the Bible that details to you how to conduct your life in a societal level with economics politics criminal systems and so on then you can't assume Christianity has that brother Mansoor is uh, abortion a Christian uh, older New Testament uh, teaching that's why they govern by it here this is the Christian country that you are, you know, supposing Christian or proposing, country, which is evolving to be a not Christian country because there was a time where no a Christian country. Oh, so it's no longer a Christian country. So why are you calling it a Christian country? Anyway, so that, original, original Christian country. Agree, agree with that. Originally, when Christianity went in Europe and so on, people exactly, were following. That's what but, I'm trying to say. but. What we're dealing with, when you're asking about Islam and you disagreed, it's the best way of life. What is a way of life? Do you have a way of life? Sorry. Good. So tell me what in your way of life you have incorporated into how to live your life that is missing in our way of life that we haven't got any answers to how to deal with that. Give me an example of any avenue of human uh, in, in interaction in which you say, ah, Islam cannot be a way of life because it's missing politics, economics, sociology, anthropology. Tell me. I am a vegetarian. Okay. So what about Islam? I respect all the animals. I don't kill animals. Yeah. So you are a way of what life. You don't kill animals. You don't step on insects when you're walking all the time. Okay. Whoa. That's a point. Sounds like you don't okay. care about insects. I don't want to discuss this. Why not? It sounds like okay. I just called you on being it's hypocritical you and you don't want, want to discuss to it. Okay. No, no, no. Wait, wait. I'll answer it. Wait. You're, uh, you said I'm a vegetarian. You said I'm a vegetarian. So this is my way of life. We do. We do. We do. I respect the animals. Do you know how we respect the animals? Okay. Do you know how we respect the animals? No. Yeah. That's why. We take life of an animal only when it's necessary and with the permission of God who created and given us permission to take this life of an animal. What's the purpose? Uh, wait, wait, why, do you, how do you know the animal doesn't want to be eaten? Do you talk to him? How, how do you know they won't? Oh, because the creator of that animal created the animal for a purpose for us to be to eat it. No, no, we don't assume it. We accept our religion based on accumulation of evidence, and then when our when our creator says 
we have uh, what's it called we are allowed to eat these animals and we treat them well in that when we kill them then we make sure they don't feel pain if you know anything about the halal way of killing you'd know that an animal does not feel pain through it uh, on your world view animals nobody will ever kill them in a humane way but you know what will happen to them they'll get eaten by other things slowly usually from their gut and they'll have a slow and painful disgusting death we, we just slice the carotid just artery and it's over. Just want to understand something from you. When a lion eats a deer, is it we, doing something wrong? We are wrong? not lions. I'm asking you, why lion does a lion... Is a carnivore. One second, one we second. Um, why does a lion eat a deer? Because he's a carnivore. What is, what is a carnivore? I don't know the, the word. I, know, I, I understand what is carnivore. He's eating meat. Right. An animal needs meat. We are a carnivore, to, to, we are to, to, to help you understand this issue from our perspective, <laughs> For example, a, no free will. Um, you, you, you're, you're giving so many things. Let's deal one issue at a time. A cow, a cow cannot eat meat and digest meat. Neither does it have the teeth to, you know, strip away meat or the enzymes in the stomach to digest it. Right? Exactly. The lion does. And guess what? So does the human being. You have the yes, teeth. You have Why canines. is your pointed teeth here, the canine teeth? Why? Look nice? You, you, you think your teeth looks like a lion's teeth? No, I'm Wait. asking you. Why is your teeth not all the same and there's some pointed teeth, the canine teeth? Why? Why do you have in your stomach enzymes specifically to digest proteins? Meat. Why? No, proteins, not meat. It's not the same. No, meat. No. Meat is a protein. We are not cannibal. No, meat is a protein. So it means we can so, eat meat. <laughs> you can't eat meat. It's okay, brother. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, so now, to. tell him omnivore. So, the lion's I know, I know. What is an omnivore? What is an omnivore? It means you can eat both plants ah, and meat. Right. So you're a carnivore it and a you can. herbivore. No. So you can eat both. No, no. Okay, you fine. And herbivore. You are omnivore. Okay, so if I can, why you don't I? Digestive system which allows you to digest both okay. meat and plants. Yeah. Okay. Why do you eat plants? Because I must eat something. <laughs> but they feel pain. When you rip okay. off, excuse they me. have no sensitive... Uh, now we realize uh, what you're getting at. Who said so? Have you, have you studied... Scientists said so. If you've bothered to read about science, plants, when a caterpillar goes into a leaf and starts eating the, the leaf, do you know what the plant does? It sends a signal. I know that. Hang on, hang on, slowly. So don't, don't deny that it has a distress signal. It sends a distress signal. Like a caterpillar is going to come and eat you. All the leaves in the tree with calcium signals. Because it doesn't want to be eaten. And you eat it. I agree. And you eat it. I agree. So you're a food but racist. It's, it's not Basically, you're a food racist. You don't mind, you know, hurting, don't you don't mind hurting plants. No, don't no. Me a racist. no, I'm not treating That's you. Not you're argument. claiming, you're claiming that you do not, not care about plant uh, suffering. You only care about animal suffering. Does it mean because you can understand what happens to you? I mean, plant tree means you suffer. You suffer because you have a sensitive system, I don't know the word Yes, no, yeah, yep. Plant Sensory trees systems. and plants don't have. They, they do. do. The they do. They That's do. the problem. The vegetarians, you just don't care. vegetarians need to update their knowledge base because veg plants do have their own they ways. Are not sentient listen, listen. Oh, so now sentience is what matters. That's what matters now. Would you eat dead meat? Dead fish? Why not? Are they it's sentient? Not sentient. Do they feel pain when they're dead? Because I dislike it. So it's about liking and dislike. So if I like my burger, it's okay, right? No, no, no. So what is the argument? Mate, your is whole the argument thing is based on your sentience, desires. Sentience, yeah. pain, choice, or is it what? I don't like it. Let me give you another. Let me ask you again. Why would you not eat fish that is dead? Show up on the beach. Because it's bad for your health. No, it's not. So when a live so. fish comes to the market, it's still dead. Are you saying it's bad for us? Exactly. Why? Why is it bad? Full of chemicals. Oh, plants aren't full of pesticides. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So all now right. the organic argument plants, shifts not to. Organic plants. So, oh, really? so okay. if I give you from a good freshwater fish, no chemicals, no pollution from a factory, and there you go, fresh fish, and then the moment I give it to you in a plate, they're all dead. Is that harmful? 
Brother Mansoor, now that we've moved the goalpost, now it's about health. Okay, what if I don't care about being healthy? So why am I wrong for eating animals? I want to eat animals. What's the problem? Well, I don't want to be healthy. You What's the issue? You don't have to kill animals. No, that but I want to eat unhealthy and, and I like was, animals. The first point was, what's, what's my way of life? My way of life is for peace, but it's for peace, not, not just... Is it absolute peace? Peace for... Is it absolute peace? It's peace, yeah. Absolute peace. Absolute is impossible in this world. Oh, okay, fantastic. So then why are you coming at us when we want to eat meat and we've just shown that you keep moving your goalposts? You don't mean... asking me one of my points, yeah. my way of life, so we have a way of I life too. With Islam and I, I no, you said it. You, want. you said Islam isn't the best way of life. No, it's not the best way of life. In right. My Tell me now, what way of life is the best, and what is it determined by? How do we determine which way of life is best? To give you an example, if a way of life says if you kill someone is twenty pounds fine, and if another way of life says if you kill someone behind bars for ten years, or if you kill someone, another way of life says you're going to be killed in retribution. How do we determine which is the best way of life? You listen to your heart. Really? Okay. So serial killers listen to their heart. You don't, you don't Should they keep doing what they're doing? But what is best for all the people, not just yourself, for your heart. Your heart for yourself, for other people. Exactly. So he mentioned about serial because killers. I think you don't know what is best for me. I don't know what is the best for you. Okay, so I'm telling you, a serial killer tells you, you don't know what's best for me. I like to inflict pain, it gives me great enjoyment. And you want to stop me from this, but you don't know what's best for me. Why are you telling me not to do this? Based on your worldview, he should keep going. It's what's best for him. He, is, he determines what's best for him. Tell me. We are literally far from the subject. Okay. So no, the it's the same subject. It's the same it's subject. Way of life. The subject was the way of life. Exactly. Yes, and a serial and killer has a way of life. You discover, and I'm happy for you, a way of life. Yet, do you agree with the pedophile's way of life? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not but about this is how. Illegal. Hang on. Who makes it illegal? The society. What if the society oh. makes it legal? Would you accept? Probably not. Ah. But so it's, it's legal, about, you said. So it's not about legality it's now. Unethical. Every it's unethical. And who determines, who determines what's unethical? Okay, so cool. The pedophile determines it's, un it's ethical, ethical for him and it's okay, right? That's what you're saying. No, because pedophiles, I think it's mental health. Oh, so that's your opinion. He doesn't think that. He thinks you have no, a mental that, illness because you're not no, a pedophile. Science said so. Science said so? Sure. What, what does science that? say about homosexuality? Is it a good thing? I think science doesn't say anything about this. Why not? What does it say? Really? Do you know why it doesn't say so? Or why you're not willing to say so? Because you know what science says exactly. No, tell <laughs> yeah? me. Tell me. I'm curious. No, I'm not going to tell you because you know exactly what science says. Homosexuality no, is, homosexuality, is, is... Homosexuality, I don't know. So when two, I'm, I'm, when two male human beings mate with each other, do they produce offspring? No, they don't. Is that scientific? What is evolution all about? No, Continuation of uh, genes and your legacy, but you don't have any offspring. So what does science say about it? This is an evolutionary leftover. Is that what it, what it says? But what, what is that so now, about homosexuality? No, what I'm saying is I mean, homosexuality, pedophilia, vegetarianism. There is one common thing all of this. Who or what determines what is the best way of life? Your particular way of life, your wishful thinking, we have discovered and understood, cannot be the arbitrator. We say the one who is the creator of all of this, mm -hmm. our God, our creator, determines what is right, what is wrong, what is moral, what is immoral. That's the yardstick. But how do you know what the creator says? Very good question. How do we know? Do you, no, you go ahead, you take this. We know, first of all, we have a firm conviction that the creator exists. Firm conviction. We don't just simply. But you have no proof. Just a conviction. Just a belief. How are convictions come about? Enlighten me. Other than by proof. It's, it's just a conviction. No. You need to be convinced by proofs. So we so are convinced. Are you, what are your proofs? Right. So do you not believe in a creator? That you need to discuss that first. We can go and explain to you. Once we have a conviction, there's a creator. Creator exists. And then we can determine what communication the Creator communicates with. Tell me your proofs about the Creator. Yeah. Do you believe in a Creator? I do. Are you convinced? Sounds like you believe without proof. I'm not convinced, no. Okay, you're not convinced. I'm studying. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. 
we say the creator exists is as obvious as night and day. Obvious. If there was no creator, there would be nothing. This existence should be nothing. From nothing should be nothing. Why does something exist to begin with? Why you and I exist? Because there is an existence that exists by necessity all the time. Eternally, yeah. with no beginning, Check. has to be. Because Anymore? if you and I exist, there cannot be a time in which there was absolute nothingness. Because from nothingness, you get nothing. Science, quantic science. It is you scared me, bro. Yes. No, I, I discussed that with Professor Lawrence Krauss. Do you know who he is? Okay, so you don't know who the scientists are, never mind, in the field. So let me tell you. <laughs> no, there are many no problem. I mean, if you don't know the most famous quantum, ones, how are you going to be less likely to know the others? Maybe there are many people, people who study quantum mechanics, yep, they do not say that you can get something from nothing. They don't say that. Because they believe particles pops into existence from another field, virtual field, virtual reality. They pop in and out. It doesn't mean they were not there. There wasn't any gravitational fields or quantum fields. There was something there. From this something, transformation happened. So scientists are with me, not with you. No, now. You are right, but it doesn't mean what you say, what you describe is God. No, what I'm saying is... Maybe, maybe someone or something. No, what I'm... Yet don't let's, let's, let's follow it through logically. We have to now come to a conclusion that something always has to exist, if we and I exist. If something always exists, this existence is a necessary existence. It's not dependent on something else. Necessary. We are all dependent or contingent on that existence. It's independent and self-sufficient. You accept that? Has to be. This goes far, far from Islam. Actually. No, no, it's not. It's you are just, far. you are just yeah. beginning to realize the Islamic concept of God. So this existence the same is same in Christianity. Really? No, where, the, where in that is Trinity? In the Genesis. No, Who in, cares what Genesis Islam, says? In Islam, where is the Trinity? There is none. So let's go back. If there is an existence that is necessary, it has to always exist, it needs to be, by definition, independent and self-sufficient. Do you follow so far? Okay. So you have an existence was independent and self-sufficient. And from this existence, things came to be. Transformation happened. <coughs> These transformation, could it happen without a willing necessary existence. If that necessary existence did not will, intend, have a choice, would these things come to be as we are now? You wouldn't. Probably. Any trans... Not probably, definitely not. To give you an, ex let, shall I give an example, about, yeah, yeah. give an example. Think about, you have all the ingredients of a recipe in a kitchen, and then you leave all the ingredients on the table, then you walk out of that kitchen. Do you think the recipe will ever be made, even if you leave it for a thousand years? Of course not. Okay, why? Because there's no agent in that room to put all the ingredients together to cause transformation, right? Okay, so... So you have the assembler, so the, the, the necessary existence who assembles and transforms things by choice and by will. So now we have established what? The existence of a necessary existence, a necessary being, a necessary thing, that is independent, self-sufficient, and has a choice. That means it is self-aware and has the ability to choose and will. Not only that, one step further, it must possess power and energy. Because without power and energy, it cannot transform or assemble anything. So this necessary existence, how many of it can there be independent like that? The power that is inherently possessed inherently possessed, not given, or acquired by something else, because it's independent. Can you have more than one of those entities? Why not? Because there will be conflicts of will. Remember we talked about choice and will? If there are two of them, let's take two examples. Let's call them Creator A and Creator B. Creator A wants to lift my coat from the floor this much, has all the power to do so, right? Creator B says, no, I'm gonna lift you up to that much has the power to do so. Where is my code gonna go? Yeah, and the good answer is? Possibilities. Either it goes up to there, that means the creator B, which wanted and has the power to lift it up there, is all powerful. 
But that means at the same time, the creator A, which wanted to be up here, is not all powerful. And if it happened here and didn't go up there, then B, creator, is not all powerful. A is. You can only have one absolute creator or absolute entity because of conflict of will. This universe demonstrates there is one absolute entity, one creator. Otherwise, it will be chaos and ruin. It will be sunshine, thunder, night, day. It will be all chaos. It would have many universes. Even in many universes, you will have the same conflict With of will. Different entities. Imagine now. In every universe. Imagine one creator destroys all the other multiverses. No, it couldn't. So it's one, not all powerful. One creator would be in charge of just wait, wait. one universe. When you say in charge, does it have the power to destroy all the other universe? No. Then it's not all powerful. So back to square one. <laughs> there can only be one all powerful entity, not more than one. So I want to share Prince with you something. Now I want to I want to share with you something. Remember you you said like how far this is maybe from Islam. Look, this is what Islam says about our Creator, because. Islam doesn't just simply give us statements of belief, it tells you how to believe. It says, look, I will tell you the English. Say, he is God, one, unique. Allahu Samad, the one who is eternal, independent, self-sufficient, free from all needs, and everyone or everything depends on him. Lam yalid wa yulad. He's not born, or begotten, or produced, or generated, or sprung into existence. Neither does he beget, produce children, or beget, or, or, or make offsprings, and on so on and so forth. So not like Christianity. Walam yakullahu. Walam yakullahu kufu wa ahad. And there is nothing like so ever, whatsoever. No comparison. No koiko. No similitude. No koiko. So if you now think about what we've discussed, there is a creator who is one, absolute, independent, self-sufficient, everything depends on him. This creator is not born, doesn't give birth, didn't come into existence, it's not going to create other gods. Can there be anything like this creator? No. Just exactly what the Quran describes. Exactly what the Bible describes. Really? Okay, is Jesus begotten or not? Yes. <laughs> According to the Bible, so it's not like the Bible. So, so you're being now, dishonest because you know that in Christianity there's a triune God and the God, uh, the, no, uh, the, son, the Son, the Catholic Son, the Son. No, sorry? Same. Uh, what, what church does not accept the triunity of God? Protestant church. I'm sorry, yes they do. They accept okay. the triunity of God. The, the Protestant what is church their, what is accepts their view? the Athanasius Creed. What is the Protestant church view about Jesus Christ, the second member of the Trinity? No, we don't believe in the Trinity. What? What is who is Jesus Christ? Oh my God! Son of God. So it sounds like he's begotten. According to the Bible, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the Bible. Trying to convince to be a Christian. I understand that, but you keep saying you that this is like Christianity, and we just sense. said, we you just said, begets not, nor is he begotten. That sounds exactly the opposite of what a begotten God in Christianity is. So you're being either dishonest or you're ignorant. Which one is it? Misinformed. Not. No, he's not. He knows that uh, no. Jesus is begotten. It, it's not. I know. I don't know. I, I must say I don't care. For me, it's not the point. It's not okay. really important. These no, are theological no, discussions, and I'm not interested in never mind. theological discussions. Never mind. That's regarding fine. Regarding what the Bible said, it is sure. it is not. Sure. I'm not a Christian. I'm not. Advocate. We're not I'm either. Right. But what is the purpose may, of your creation? I try, what I try to say yeah. is that if you want really to understand the world, yeah. you don't have to be close to just one opinion. So Islam, for example, get the best opinion, right? You have to try to study many different. To get theories. the best opinion, exactly. Good. So I'm saying you Islam offers you open, the best. You must be open May. to listen to other theories Where? than what your belief is. Even theories you think you might think are completely different of your beliefs. May we have and no problem really studying other things, but you want us to hold contradictory views at the same time? That's nonsense. But you can't the hold way, the, the best way to get knowledge. It's to confront contradictory. It's not to say. Yeah, you could confront the, it, the but world, then eventually the you can't hold full, it at the same time. Full of contradictions. Full of contradictions. You can look sure. around. So, of course, many. Things You've said the scene already. What is the purpose of your existence? To improve myself, to try 
try to improve the world in my small world. Okay, and how did you be a good how uh, did you come to that this is the purpose of your existence? How did you come to that knowledge? Is it through your own intuition or someone told you? How do you know without a shadow of doubt that indeed is your purpose of existence? I have plenty of doubts. That's, that's the way. So you're not sure? If you are so sure to be in the right way, I don't think you, you hire yourself because you are so sure you already... Are you a, are you a man or a woman? <laughs> are you sure what, what you are? I'm sure. This so you can be sure? Do you need to now say, no, I don't need to be sure? Are you, okay, let me ask you again. Are you doubtful whether you're a man or a woman? Yeah, sure. Likewise, we must be sure about our purpose of existence. We can't just leave it there and say, oh, there's a room for development. No, you need to achieve to a point where that's it. You must be sure about it. So we say there is a purpose of our existence which I didn't create me, myself. I didn't create the heavens and the earth. Neither did the nothingness. We know our creator did. So it is our creator who's going to tell us you what is the purpose of our existence is. But that is true, but that doesn't mean that Islam is the truth. Okay. What would convince you Islam being truth? Give us some criteria that you're seeking and we will offer this to you. And once it's offered and you're convinced, inshallah you'll become a Muslim. <laughs> I'm not, it's strange, but I'm not trying to be convinced by anybody. I prefer looking for myself. Remember what he said, we need to be sure and about th something. That's what I'm doing, talking with you. Right, I, but we can make I, you I know to a point where you can be sure. Some things like this are so complicated that it's difficult to be convinced just like this. You have to study, to listen to you. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean... So, for, help us further the conversation by just telling us what kind of evidence are you seeking when you look I, to learn about Islam. I would, I would like to be like you and knowing I'm a, a Muslim, I'm a Christian and I know I, I got the truth, I know where I go, I'm sure about this. I'm not. You can be. I, I, I'm, I'm looking for the truth. Maybe I will, be, I will die before. No, no. So when you look, how do you look? What's your I, I, method of looking? You know, when somebody looks, you have a criteria of evidence. I listen to people. I'm open to listen to people. Sure. But every, do you treat all evidence the same? Do you think that, for example, uh, I don't know, somebody telling you, uh, look, look around, um, this must mean that Islam is true. Just look around at the world. You won't accept this as evidence, it sounds like. So you have some form of criteria for your evidence. Cool. What, okay, so what is that criteria so it helps us communicate with you better? Criteria evolved. No, okay, so what has your what has your criteria evolved uh, up until now? What, what is it now? Life makes you evolve. No, I, I understand that. Of course you're evolving. I'm telling you, what criteria do you look to satisfy when seeking the true way of living your life? You should think about these things when you're looking, when you're examining evidence, when you're examining, when you're learning about new ideologies, you should have a clear idea of what you're looking for. How do you know if this ideology or that ideology is true? I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm comparing with what I learned before, with what I read about science, about religions. Then I try to read other things on the same subject, to compare again, to listen to people, and then I reflect by myself and say, this sounds good, this okay, sounds Okay, that sounds so good, that sounds... You know, these are value judgments. Evolving. The good Every and the bad thing. are value judgments. You're still not telling us based on what is something good or something bad. That's my point. It's like you're looking at these ideologies and you're like, okay, I'm reflecting, this is good, this is bad. Okay, based on what? This is a value judgment. Based of your life experience. Okay, so then you're basically saying that you ought to live life based on your own desires. Not and desires, which are life experiences. Life exp of course, your life experiences shape the way that you are uh, desiring to uh, attach yourself to an ideology or not. What's the objective framework you're using? <laughs> I try to explain you, I'm not attached to any idea. No, you're I'm open to everybody. I understand everybody. that, but I'm asking you, how would you attach yourself to an ideology when you are examining and surveying ideologies? What do you look for? Do you look for empirical evidence? Let me, let me give an example. Imagine, not imagine, you can see the, the park there, right? Imagine you're looking for that orchid. The beautiful orchid. So you'll be looking at all these grasses and plants and trees and the different flowers, daffodils and so on. You must already have an idea and a concept. What is an orchid? What is an orchid? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for the best way of life, the best ideology, you must already possess an understanding what that is. So what is that based on? 
Is it based on what your experiences tells you? Because your experiences change as you evolved. Exactly. So it cannot be based and on your experience. That's the best part of life. But that cannot be based on your experience because your experience is ever changing. It's ever changing. So anything that is fluctuating, that cannot be the arbitrator of what you're seeking. But for example, for taking back your example, you look for an orchid and you see another beautiful flower you never seen before. Mm -hmm. And finally, you can change your mind and say, oh, beautiful. It's even more beautiful than the orchid. And that so would be horrible you because people. you'd fail at so your mission of finding an that's, orchid. That's the beauty yeah. of life. You, you're not... You're not blocked. Okay. You, you told him that he was looking oh, for an second. orchid, but he wasn't looking for an orchid. No, no. He was looking to see what was there. Exactly. That's, that's what the problem that's is. Not, that's much so, better than just looking okay. for an orchid. I'm looking so imagine now, flower. imagine now someone looks for a nice, uh, not nice, imagine someone looks for a compatible wife or a husband and they find a compatible wife and a husband. You are telling us and everyone else, keep looking, keep looking. She's not the one. He's not the one. There's somewhere else. You have to keep looking. She's tell that you to your wife. You know what? I'm keep. I'm looking. I'm looking. I, I, I don't know whether I've got the right wife or not. And imagine now the husband wife says the same thing. Um, I don't think you're. I'm um, keep looking. Your life would be miserable because you are not looking for the truth. You are not looking for what is real. You are searching for your own desires. And your desires will never stop you from no. looking and looking Look, and looking, said, and you'll never be no, content. No, you'll never be happy. No, no. Mate, you're looking for what satisfies what you at the current me? moment. So today you're a vegetarian, tomorrow you'll be a carnivore, okay? The only difference is that you're inside it yourself. Your experience is evolving, yeah. and as you evolve, you you'll have different true? things that appeal to you. Okay, so you're married to your wife today, you're evolving, in a few years, you might not like her. Get rid, get a new wife that, you, that appeals to your new desires. That's what you're basically saying. There's no consistent, objective metric by which you actually value things in your life, including your wife or including your religion or including anything else. But how could anything be objective when things are constantly changing? You know, because very well, you know, one day somebody could be like, oh, exactly. Yeah, like, okay, I studied this in college, I, I like this, but you get older, uh -huh. you don't know if you're going to be the same person exactly. in five years or something. Yeah. So, you know. So what's wrong with that? Yeah. 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 So, because we have an objective standard, the yardstick to measure things by. Who? Who does? Who does? We do. We do. Who, who's oh. we? Sorry, I came so late. We, we, we are Muslims. <laughs> okay. okay. Muslims who believe in objective <laughs> reality. We believe in God objectively existing by necessity. Once we establish that, everything follows from there. I see. How can you objectively prove that there's a God? Okay. We already did. Okay. We were already um, here, but we already did that. Okay. that, that you kind of missed right. that conversation. No, 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 we can go. Well, we can do it again. We can do it again. Sure, sure. Okay. Do, do, do you believe there is no creator, no God? I don't believe that there's not, but I'm also a scientist, so I feel like I need empirical. When you say scientist, what's your level of education? Uh, just a bachelor's degree, sir. What so so that's not, that doesn't make you a scientist. I've got masters. It doesn't sir, make me a scientist. Sir, sir don't. <laughs> when we say scientist, you have no bounds to make that statement. Yeah, we do. I cannot call myself a scientist <laughs> because I've got an MSc. Sir, I worked in viral vector gene therapeutics at Thermo Fisher Scientific. What scientific background do you have? Why do we get a PhD? And what's the PhD about? What scientific background do you have to say that I am not a scientist, oh. sir? I'm Tell saying as an, with an MSc. I don't consider myself to be a scientist. Why not? To be a scientist. And even the definition of a scientist is up to the person. What, like, what's your definition? Oh, really? So, for example, now you. It, so, what, what's your wait, definition wait, of a scientist? Wait, 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 wait. Not my definition. So, basically, anyone who doesn't. So, if you don't have a PhD, yeah. why do people get a PhD for? What's the PhD about? To become a doctor, sir. No. <laughs> PhD is a training. Okay. Training to be a. A researcher. So if you're in science, you become a scientist training. PhD will train you to become a scientist within the field of science. In social science, you can do other PhDs and other things and so on and so forth. With a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, I don't think the academic world or the scientific world would tell us that we are scientists. That's anyway, so subjective. Besides the point. What does my job title say? Okay. Scientist one at Thermo Fisher Science. Fine, you're a scientist. Okay. That's your job title. <laughs> All right. Good. Back to the... Good. What, what were we scientist. About? Fine. Yeah. Now, because you study science, let me ask you from science. Can something come from nothingness? 
<laughs> no, no. Right. Are you something? 100%. Right. Could it have come from nothingness? Everything is based from matter and energy. Right. Those so matter is eternal. That fuels everything. Matter is eternal? Totally. What do scientists say? It's Come on. 13.6, 13.7, 13 13.8 billion years of what? Well, okay, well, so so hold on. I, I see where you're going. I'm not saying that. I'm not going God, anywhere. I'm, I'm telling you what the scientists say. Can you just let me talk, man? Come on. It's going to be a conversation. Like, people, no, it'll be a back and forth dialogue. But, like, he just said a few words and you. That's fine. Well, be, because we're going down different avenues. That's fine. You carry know, on. Carry all, on. All, all, all My all apologies. Time. Carry on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it all, you know, we're all friends here. But, anyways, um, what I was saying is, I, I'm not saying that there is or is not a God. So, just, I'm putting that out there. I'm not saying there's no God. God doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we heard you. But, but, you know, exactly. But I'm also saying I need, like, concrete facts, concrete truths yeah. to, you know, to, to give me the evidence to make me say, sure. okay, 100%, I'll bet all my money there isn't. Right. So, so I'm not saying there is. I'm not saying there right. isn't. I'm a peaceful in-between because I don't think we have enough empirical evidence to make that claim that there is this higher power I think all of it it's beautiful it's really beautiful thought to think what are our origins where do we come from and I think religion in general is just all these different avenues to explain the same unanswered question that we don't know whether it's Christianity Muslim Hindu Buddhism you know these questions are beyond us and I think it's it's great and it's cool to you know everybody has their own origin story um, but yeah, I, I personally feel like there's no way to really know, but these thoughts are soothing and these thoughts are calming and, you know, bring us some sort of sanction at night. So and that's a claim. You think that we can't know anything about uh, our origin, why? No, 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 see, now you're, you're mixing my words. Not that we can't know anything. So we can know, that's fine. So let's yeah, carry on, yeah. let's carry on. Okay. So according to the science which you have used as a tool to understand the reality, mm -hmm. What do the scientists say about matter and its origin? I don't know, sir. You tell me. I'm not a scientist. Our right? universe began about less than 14 billion years ago. Okay? So now the next question is, was there a before? Was there anything before that? Okay? I have what do no scientists... idea. What do, you, what do you think? I mean, I, as a scientist, you should explore a bit further, right? Well, no. Why not? Not at all. Why, what, why do you what? feel because I'm a scientist I should do that? Because this is a question you said you're not sure about. So you should now explore. But why does that make me inquisitive? I don't know about it. Maybe I don't want to know anymore. Maybe I'm Okay, so that's your choice not okay. to know. So Fine. Next. No, no, I agree. If someone doesn't want to know something about it because they, it goes whatever reasons, that's fine. You may not know or not want to know. But the fact of the matter is you and I understand this principle that nothingness, which is the absence of everything, absence of energy, mm -hmm. absence of quantum fields, absence of gravitations, absence of quarks, hadrons, leptons, gluons, absence of bosons, absence of everything, cannot originate something. As so far the fact, as we know. As far as we know. That's the, that, because that's the rationality tells us, as far as we know, it's not possible. So that means in our world view, since we exist, something has to always exist. Has to. It cannot come, come from absolute nothingness. So now we are dealing with something that always exists. The question now is, what is the characteristics or properties or qualities of this something? The something that has transformed us from an initial state, because you weren't human being like as you are, you know, 200 years ago. Okay? You maybe have something in a, in a, in a I don't know, according to your understanding of what, whatever you were. So this transformation and an assembly that had happened, assembly and transformation, it requires an agency with consciousness, will, and possessor of power and energy. So this thing that always exists must inherently be a possessor of power and energy, must be conscious and self-aware, must be someone who willed something that willed this transformation and assembly to happen, and must also be absolute and necessary so 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 now what's the what's the avenue of this conversation are you trying to tell me that god is objective 
or we were discussing about no, how no, can no, we be I, sure I, about it and I'm, I've given you ways where according to even the scientific paradigm that you work operate on it tells you there has to be always an existence and I've given you certain qualities of that necessary existence and that's, that, that's wonderful that's so now wonderful. so now you realize this necessary existence is absolute possessor of consciousness self-awareness has a will and possesses energy and transforms things you can call this next step the originator of things the assembler of things jamia the originator the assembler the creator because that's a creation has taken place so what you now realize the concept that we are inviting you to be sharing with us yeah. it's the same concept yes there is a necessary independent being an agency and that agency that being is has to be one mm -hmm. of a kind cannot be more than one because there will be a conflict of will as you've gone through before and I, I think that's very cool like like the last thing you said you're inviting me into a concept of a frame of reality that you and many others believe yeah. and I think that's great and I think that's that's beautiful and that's awesome you right. know? and I love that it has, you know, you feel like using what we know, you can make these deductions about how the universe was created. But, you know, I, I think that's your concept. And Do you disagree? And if uh, so, why? No, no sir, because you know my stance from the very beginning. I said, I don't know if there is a God. No, that's not the question. And the question, the, the, the framework that the, we have now what developed. Was the question? What was the question? What we've developed in the concept of a necessary existence. Do you disagree with any of that? And if you do, why? You must bring scientific paradigm, logic and rationality to disagree. Um. Well, okay, yeah, so... So based off the concept, like we say, everything in the universe is matter and energy, right? I feel like if there is something concrete, whether it's, you know, a little microorganism under a microscope or something big, giant, you should be able to, to see it. You should be able to, in some way, experience it and have a record that like you experienced it. And I mean, again, I still think the conversation in general, this is going beyond like uh, a human's... Uh, like, I was talking uh, about something different. What's your name? Trevor, sir. Trevor, I'm Mansour. And Mansour. what's your name? Pascal. Pascal, Ismail. Pascal and Trevor, nice Ismail. meeting you. Ismail. Ismail. Now, Trevor, Pascal. we were discussing Pascal's about waiting. a framework Ismail. of Ismail. knowledge, Ismail. of our reality in which yeah. I, I've, I've given you what I think you it's, would accept. Uh, okay, so, so, so I, I gave you a concept of. You give me your subjective in, truth, but it's. I didn't give you no, no, a, a gave subjective you deductive no, reasoning. No, that wasn't the subjective. Evidence, baby. Oh, it, no, no, no. You so, want empirical, scientific, so, put under a microscope evidence, so, and we're not restricting ourselves to that because you yourself don't restrict yourself to that. So basically, I feel like coming from a scientist background, what is evidence? If okay. you go to the primary literature, you go to that journal, whether it's New England Journal of Medicine, The Lancet, you go to a reputable source that's peer-reviewed by many 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 PhDs because okay. let me no ask let me ask you a question okay, that's not where you go for evidence well, don't, don't, where do you go uh, sir? Stanford encyclopedia Stanford encyclopedia for philosophy that's where you well, go that's great so yeah. let's pull up the Stanford sure. encyclopedia you should and you should tell me what non-empirical well, virtues are in science well, well let's look it up let's see in that non-empirical sir, virtues sir, sir, sir. let's go in there yes and go see ahead what he's saying that there is a god let's see no, that. That, whoa 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. That's a straw man if I've ever seen one. Did I talk about I said, God? you don't go to the medical uh, medical journals to see Trevor, what the evidence did definition I, is. Did I use the word God ever? You mentioned God. What are you talking about? Did I about? mention God? Or you're talking about the higher power. Right? No. no. You, just just asked, you just said, it's what is money. evidence? Go to the medical journal. I don't go to the medical journal to see well, what evidence is. Because, I go to the philosophical okay. encyclopedia. Okay, I have a problem with this. Trevor, Trevor, I have a, I have a question for you. You can help me with that, first of all. Yes. You can start the Do condescension as well. Do you know gravity exists? Yes. Okay, what's the evidence for it? Scientific evidence. I don't need anything. I, I don't accept anything else. I'm not 100% sure. Could you please tell me? There is none. Okay. I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, no, no, let, me tell, let me explain. Let me explain, Trevor. <laughs> Empirical <laughs> evidence <laughs> means <laughs> what? <laughs> we observe. Okay, have we observed? Have we seen it? Have we tasted it? Have we felt it? Have we smelt it? With our five senses, we can't see, taste, feel gravity. All 
we know about gravity is the effect it produces. So gravity is not something that you can prove tangible. through observation. It's not tangible evidence for you. You are only you're only extrapolating by looking at the effect it is having and you're saying, ah, there must be a cause for all of this. There has to be a cause for this pull. Everything is pulling inside this center of the earth. So there must be a gravitational pull. Now, you don't know what's pulling it because you can't see it. There is no such thing you're proving like there's a graviton. Like photons, we're trying to establish what is a graviton. But we haven't done so yet. So there is no empirical evidence for it. I will say though, there's no like hard evidence, but there's an equation that can predict that phenomenon no. consistently. No, predictive it's power doesn't mean truth. Th what this equation does, it tells you about see, the effect. That, that's where it does. If after, let's say, you do the same thing seven million times, and yeah. all seven million, it yeah. works. Yeah. Do you know that, that, that at truth. seven million and one, it could not work? And that's the whole thing about you're making an inductive. Um, inference and inductive inferences are subject to the problem of uh, the fact that you're using circular reasoning. Some people obviously argue that it's virtuous. Nobody's saying you shouldn't use science. But would you but bet you, on those odds? Uh, we're not talking about banking or not. Million. We're not talking about banking or not. We're just saying that induction, you're making an inductive inference, which even after 7 million could still be wrong. Because at 7 million and yeah. 1. That's a philosophical argument, yeah. by the way, not a yeah. scientific one. And Trevor, just right, one boys. more. Before you go, before yeah, you go. Yeah, Trevor, Trevor, you. Trevor, I know this you have to go. This was fun, though. Yeah, I really Trevor. like this. This was like, you know. Gravity is, really is cool. something that we all take for granted yeah. only because of the effect that we observe of gravity. We don't see, we don't. We don't yeah. Indeed. Our principle is the same. We see the effect of our creator. The cause of all of this, there's a cause. And that's our creator. That's the originator. That's the one who assembles things. Yep. The necessary existence. So if you are okay with that level of evidence, then you have that evidence in front of you. That yes, just like I accept gravity, even though I haven't seen any gravitons, but I infer it from looking at the effect, you should be consistently doing also likewise and say, I can see that there has to be a necessary existence through whose effect everything is assembled and transformed. Yeah, and see, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to like the difference. Like, for instance, I said difference in thought. I said, OK, gravity, you can predict this phenomenon. But Ishmael, you said that prediction doesn't mean anything, even if it predicts it seven million times. If it doesn't work once, it's not true. So I think that right there is like the divide. It just comes down to what we believe as no, no, we well, we, we get, use inductive inference. We just he just told you to use inductive inference. We don't throw it basically, away, guys. I don't think we're going to get to a conclusion. We can at the end of we the can. day. We just have we can beliefs. we can. No, it's no. because yeah, you're. So it seems like right so we, we can we can. No, no, we can. Honestly, it was great. Do you know anything about the history of Look, religion? We can and come to can you all send me this? Yeah, it's going to be on YouTube. You see the channel? Dawa was. Dawa was. D A W A. That's the logo and that's the picture. Just say hello to your audience. Full of hey, that's cool, man. This you is take my first care. time in the UK. Backwards. Backwards. By the way, we are we are Muslims. Yes, sir. So pick up a copy of the Quran to explore a bit more. You, you take care. I love you all. Take care. I don't know. Take care. He's an American, although he's an American. That's how you're heading out. That's how you're heading out. No, we can finish up with you. We can finish up. I know you're American. It's tough enough for me. Are you American or French? That's okay. I'm Patrick. Swiss French.